Samurai Sentai Shinkenger is a season of Sentai I've always had my eye on. My first season of Power Rangers was its adaptation, Samurai, so Shinkenger has always had this weird looming vibe to me. I've always seen Samurai described as like the same show as Shinkenger but inferior because America dumb, so I was actually interested in a few things while watching through this season. First, is it actually the same thing as Samurai? Two, is is it actually better than Samurai? In 3, I was just interested in seeing the suits again and getting nostalgic for all these aesthetics. So uh, now that I've actually seen the original counterpart to my original Power Rangers season, I can definitely confirm that the Shinkenger suits are still very epic, but as for my other two questions, we'll just have to wait and see. If you're not interested in spoilers for Shinkenger, like in today's video all about the season, be sure to stay tuned for my upcoming Sentai Potential video where I'm going to talk more about the visuals of the season. Also consider subscribing and leaving a like. You don't have to do it now, but if you find yourself enjoying this video at any point, that would be greatly appreciated. Shinkenger captured my interest right in its first episode. I really liked the pre-establishment vibe of the show, with Takaru already taking on Gedoshu forces as a ranger, and in a way the others are already rangers but like on standby and they're just answering a dormant call to action. I really liked this setup because it established a lot in the show, like for starters, the amazing theme song playing over the first fight. All the Shinkenger music is really good actually, especially the morph theme. But anyways, it's a super awesome introduction to Takaru as the experienced lord of the group, which in turn sets up the core of the season in my opinion, which is the relationship between these characters and how it evolves and develops them as people over the course of the entire season. It's a super intriguing part of the show and I think it's done extremely well. It basically unifies the new Shinkenders as they effectively all have this same arc of spending the whole season working through their own troubles with the help of the other samurai in order to better serve their lord and come together as a team. Even though they all have the same overarching story of developing themselves to link them together, the actual lessons they learn is unique for each of them so that it doesn't really feel like anything is being repeated and I think that's awesome. Mako is the weakest out of everyone for me personally. I think it was interesting how they did something a little bit different and gave her a stronger connection to Takaru and mirrored his Juzo rivalry by having her challenge Daigun, but it just wasn't that exciting for me personally. However, as a testament to how strong these characters are, I still like Mako. The cooking gags were great and I didn't enjoy it when her mother came back for an episode and expanded the lore of the season. I really liked Ryunosuke's duality between fully embracing his new life as the most eager person to serve the Lord of the Four, but then in his episodes he took a step back and kind of remembered what he left behind. I really loved how that one random Kuroko he met in probably his first focus episode comes back and plays a role in the endgame as a fantastic way to bring his arc of embracing both sides of his life full circle. Chiaki and Kotoha are two of my favorites for the wonderful amount of growth they have. Chiaki sort of annoyed me at first for how much of an asshole he was and meh, I just want to be stronger than Takaru, meh, meh, meh. I don't know, we've always had like the Red Ranger rivalry thing, but then developing Chiaki out of this selfish attitude becomes the cornerstone of his story to get him to gain more respect for Takaru as the Lord. I really liked the episode where he talks with his dad on his time with the Shinkenjers in a non-asshole way, which shows how far he's come and how he's not an asshole anymore. I, I can't stress, he was like a really big asshole in the beginning. What I loved about Kotoha was that she had the most unique starting situation out of everyone. She literally was not supposed to be here, she's just a last minute substitute. So she strives to get stronger like Chiaki, but it's not out of selfish desire. It's it's just to get a feeling of fitting in with her teammates, which I thought was a little heartbreaking. <laughs> Through no fault of her own, she feels like she doesn't fit in. I loved seeing her transformation into not only a skilled samurai, but just a person that had confidence in themselves. Made 10 times better by it coming to a conclusion with the letter from her sister who was indirectly the cause of her misplacement. She just had a wonderful story, and because of how Shinkenger structured itself, it was really 
really satisfying to see it come full circle like this near the finale. I'm sure other Sentai seasons do this kind of overarching development thing, but this is the first time I've really noticed such a clear line of development for each of the characters that's so overarching like this throughout the entire show, and I really loved it. Takaru contrasted so nicely with these newbies in multiple ways as well, like obviously they were less experienced and carefree, and he's just... But there's also this interesting angle where, while the other four developed more into hardened samurai warriors, Takaru developed more into a caring person and friend. I also really liked how badass he was in fight scenes, and in general, that's just really awesome. He wasn't really like an asshole to me, like Chiaki, he was just like, cool. <laughs> Maybe it sounds a bit generic to have the badass, aloof leader become less of that throughout a story, but I think the twist with that story here made it super unique and totally recontextualized it throughout the beginning of the show. Earlier, it seems like he's acting this way for the generic reason, he's the lord, he's the strongest, he doesn't need to get close to those beneath him, but Kaoru? Ka Kaoru? Kaoru. Kaoru's intro as the true Shiba Lord, revealing Takaru was just a fake, flips this on its head to reveal that he did this for those beneath him to not hurt any of his friendships when he inevitably had to step down. Even though Kaoru's reveal was not a surprise to me because it's so famous and it wasn't Samurai, it's still so successful for the crazy effects it has on this story. One of the best parts of bringing all these strangers together with a different flaw is that by helping each other get rid of this flaw. They slowly felt more and more like a unified team. I think it's awesome that this wasn't uprooted by some Gedoshu plan, but by the duties and traditions they had been raised to follow. It makes Kaoru really interesting beyond being the first female red leader. She's just another victim of these traditions and just molds them to her advantage. She's unable to break free because she doesn't have any friends to rely on. Demonstrated when the Shinkenders break free and rally around Taku at the end, even though he's nothing more than a stand-in because they're all great friends. That moment really just solidified this main team of Shinkenders as one of my favorite Sentai casts. Their individual personalities are awesome, their interactions with each other are fantastic, and the way they changed over the course of the season and became more of a unified family of samurai was just amazing. They are by far a highlight of the season, but I can't help but feel like I'm missing someone. What's really funny about Shingenger is that the main cast is so amazing, and in direct opposition, both literally and metaphorically, are the villains, which I think are sort of boring. Dokoku is boring. <laughs> he was more of a comedic character than anything threatening to me because all he does is sit around on his ass and drink what my subtitles refer to as booze, which is just... Okay then. <laughs> it's explained to be a result of the failed ceiling script in the past, splitting Dokoku's power, but I think it would have been interesting if we did a little bit of something with this. Maybe Dokoku could have begun the season with this weaker prototype form, and he slowly upgrades back to his full power throughout the season, maybe by going through trials or developing himself throughout the two worlds, as a parallel to the overarching development of the hero Shinkenders. It just made the finale kind of lacking to me because there wasn't much to the main villain other than making him drink booze the whole season. <laughs> His squid friend is still just the American name to me, Octoru. I really don't know what his full name is, and I don't really need to because he's just the squid friend. And these fuzzballs are annoying. I don't like them. Why are they here? Please go away. You're probably expecting me to now sing the praises of Dayu and Decker Juzo, and yeah, they're pretty cool for the most part. It's annoying that Dayu doesn't really do much other than play the same goddamn song at the beginning of most of the episodes the entire season, and Juzo has this strange fake out death that results in him not really existing for most of the season.
Despite that, I really like their parallel backstories as humans that chose to become Gedoshu as it sort of emphasizes their villainy. I know people will call each other monsters metaphorically. Here, these are people who became literal monsters by choice. Despite choosing to become emotionless monsters, they still had this attachment to their humanity and human emotions and it was a really intriguing subject, especially how it played a much larger part with other better villains. Even though he had the stupid fake out death and doesn't really do a lot for a lot of time, Juzo is still more interesting to me just because I had more fun watching him run around and fight people and he was just a lot more charismatic. I love how he develops this little pseudo rivalry with Takaru that comes to a head in the finale when Takaru is left with nothing but a will to fight after his exile, much like Juzo, and the main ranger cast pulls Takaru back to the light and solidifies their amazing growth together. I also think it's funny that this final fight sort of predicts something that would happen over 10 years later with Mitsuru Karahashi as a purple swordsman with purple energy fighting a flaming swordsman. Even though Juzo has a lot of depth and interesting motivations, my favorite villain is actually just Akumaro. This asshole is just cunning and crazy and I just really enjoyed that. Even before he arrives, I love this buildup where certain monsters said they had been sent by a mysterious benefactor and then Akumaro arrives, makes this badass arrival, he has the beautiful Kirigami monsters to mirror the origami zords and then he just messes around with Dokuku like, oh I'm definitely loyal. Let me just go do my own thing, all right? I loved how his final plan turned what seemed like a bunch of unconnected episodes into part of this mission to create a weak point across Japan to just open a gate to hell. It was a simple idea where, as a monster, he would never be able to experience hell, so he wants to bring it to the human world to be able to go there. He wants to feel something, and he's chosen to feel the wrath of hell. And it's even more interesting when you consider, again, that he's employed the two Gadoshu who did have more emotion than all the monsters because they were the, the hybrids. It's just all these layers sacking together and it's super cool and Akumaro is in my opinion the linchpin of that. Akumaro was a pretty simplistic villain but he's also just fun, unique, and charismatic and it's enough for me. I guess I actually like the Gadoshu more than I thought even though Dokuku is bad these three generals are actually pretty great and really improve the villain faction. I will stand by these fuzzballs being absolutely annoying though like what are they even called? God damn it. <laughs> Okay, so my favorite part of Shinkenger should be pretty obvious because I haven't talked about it the whole time and it's how similar it is to Power Rangers Samurai. I know people said Samurai was a translated version of Shinkenger, but like, I, w I wasn't expecting everything to be the same. Every character is the same, but is just Americanized. Instead of being a Kabuki actor, Ryunosuke is a swimmer. Kaoru is a sister instead of an unrelated person. Dayu's name doesn't even change. She is Dayu in both versions of the show and that's hilarious and this isn't a knock against either of these seasons it was really fun to essentially rewatch my first Power Ranger season through a totally different lens in a weird way Shinkenger is nostalgic for me I've genuinely got a new appreciation for Samurai and it heightened my enjoyment of Shinkenger however I will still have to say that Shinkenger is better just because the theming works because we're in Japan and Samurai feels a bit racist also, it helps that Samurai Sentai Shinkenger has Genta Umemori Shinken Gold. I was instantly charmed by how his mere presence disrupts the status quo of this show. I think it's really awesome how he set up these generations of Shinkengers and their bloodlines, and he's this super high-tech modern edition that reverse-engineered the older tech. This scrappy inventor aspect helps him stand out from the others that have been training their whole lives to be Samurai, as he's kind of just wedged himself in there. He's made himself a samurai on his own with his own skills and abilities. The sushi and light theme technology that he made all on his own is super fun. In turn, I think it makes his team integration really unique. I enjoy the team dynamic with Genta and some Shinkenders being so excited for him to join the team, but like Ryunosuke and G were opposed to it because of the nature of his existence and how it contradicts the Shinkenger traditions. When Kaoru became the new 
Shinken Red, because of his nature on the team, it was so satisfying for him to just go, no, I want to fight with Takaru. I literally don't have to listen to you. I can do what I want. Genta has a lot going for him in terms of his basic premise and how it works for the circumstances in the show, but I also just really love his personality. He's so energetic and excited and happy, whether it be in a fight, making a new armament, or making sushi. It's so great to watch. His actor's facial expressions are hilarious and they're so funny. Then we have Daigoyo combining his inventor side, his Shinkenger elements, and his love of sushi, and we've got an absolutely iconic Sentai duo. They basically have the same personality, so we basically have double the enjoyment. I loved Genta and Daigoyo just riffing off of each other in fights and in the sushi stand. They are just so much fun together, and they're definitely my favorite part of the season, but mainly it's thanks to Genta. Genta is my new favorite additional slash six ranger. I think he was a conceptually amazing character that had a beautiful execution combined with an absolute wonder of a performance. I did, his actor's like a huge part of why I loved him so much, so I should probably go check out some other tokusatsu that his actor's been in. So Shinkenger's a very well made Super Sentai season. The biggest problem I have with it is just a few missteps with the villains and a general lack of interest with them, but I think the Rangers are absolutely fantastic together, whether it be their personalities or their amazing arcs or Genta. I rank it behind Kira Major and Ryu Soldier purely because you can't tie rankings and I just had more fun watching those two higher seasons, but Shinkenger is honestly on the same level of enjoyment as those two seasons for me. I would definitely recommend it to any Sentai fans looking for some kind of sword action Sentai or just Sentai fans in general. <laughs> if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts on Shinkenger, especially in relation to Power Rangers Samurai, that's the focus of my upcoming video. Consider becoming a patron to see that early or just subscribe to see it as soon as possible, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.